This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble. It is Tuesday. It is our first night of the week, and we're ready and uh, willing to start rolling with this whole frustrating exercise in futility. I don't know what that means. Anyway, uh, we're going to be talking to our citizens panel in about 25 minutes from right now. But as we do on most Mondays, uh, we go out and reach out to one of our favorite, favorite people, ladies and gentlemen. Talk about comedy. Talk about swell. I like Larry Bubbles Brown, mainly because when we talk, he lets me do most of the talking. Well, you're more interesting. <laughs> no, no you're, you're, what do you mean I'm more interesting? You've you, got more stories. I'm just a, I'm just a comic. You've been in many mediums. You've been all over the country. I've been in this he, studio he, apartment forever. You know something? I'll tell you. I... I uh, if I were you, I would be very happy with with who I am because you are one really funny, great comic, and uh, I mean, and I say that in all sincerity. Uh, I mean, well, when when people when I say to people when people say, "So, uh, any great comics you know?" and I say, "Larry Bubbles Brown," and well, you know, it's cool. funny in the business, Larry. You're, you're people do recognize you, you know. I mean, I can talk to somebody in New York, a bunch of comics, if I'm, I don't talk to a bunch of comics anymore, but when I do, when I have, and I mention Larry Bubbles Brown, they all know who Larry Bubbles Brown is. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you're, you're a guy who has been very well-renowned and, and yet has not achieved the success he deserves. Does that I make don't sense? See, the income is not matching up with his, with these accolades. No, we'll talk about my income. I mean, what am I? I got I've got social security and a small after a pension. That's my total income. And I think about I really want to work. I really want to work radio. Okay, I really would like a radio job right now. If anybody's listening to me right now, I'm available. And believe it or not, you can get me pretty cheap at this point. <laughs> But and he's I, also great, so hire him. Yeah, but I also happen to be 77 years old, and that's why nobody wants to hire me. Not because I can't do the job. I mean, am I any less glib now than I was 30 years ago? I don't think so. You know, I mean, my memory fails me occasionally. In fact, sometimes I can't remember the word memory. But, uh, you know. But outside of that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm capable of doing probably one of the best talk shows in the business. And yet, Absolutely. you know, they see the, the, they see me walk in and they look at the guy and they say, hey, he's old. And they go, a real pro. That's what he is. He's a real pro. I hate that real pro shit. It's, I know. The age discrimination is, that's the one discrimination that's widely accepted. No one even challenges it, really. Yeah, yeah. And they, I guess they think you're okay because you get your Social Security. Yeah, fuck guess, you, fuck geez. you. I can't live on my Social Security. You know, th thank God I, I saved a, just a pittance of money, uh, not a huge amount, you know. But I would like to work again. I would like to have a paycheck coming in. And I think you would like to work every weekend and make the kind of money you were making several years ago. Yes, or I would like to be uh, back in radio with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but that would the, be the best. <laughs> the, the difference, the difference, though, Larry, is is that, um, um, uh, you know, uh, you just, there aren't as many places to work anymore. I mean, how many comedy clubs are there now? San Francisco has two, and there used to be, I've got a pink section from 1988, and there were 14 full-time clubs within an hour of San yeah. Francisco, and now there's like five. Hmm. So you could make a good living here without going on the road back then. Yeah, yeah. They, they, Long gone. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's terrible. But, you know, we talk about comedy legends, and we lost one this week. We lost two this week, actually. One who died before the other and then was forgotten completely because the other died. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, you know, if you're going to die, you got to die on the right day, on a bad news day. 
and you got to die when nobody else is dying. Uh, and I'm trying to remember who. Uh, it was. Uh, I know it was uh, the day Michael Jackson died, died. Was also the day Farrah Fawcett died. Yeah. Now, if if Michael Jackson hadn't died, Farrah Fawcett would have uh, big all artic- day all day Farrah. Yeah, all day Farrah tributes. But Farrah dies, and everybody starts the tributes. And just as they're starting the tributes, Michael Jackson dies. Yeah. So she, no one even knew. And it all goes to hell, right? Yeah. Now, if anybody deserves accolades uh, for a life well lived, it would be Dick Gregory, uh, a man of infinite uh, uh, causes and infinite uh, desire to push those causes, and, and, and a, you know, a good human being. Okay, uh, he was a brilliant comic, one of the first comics to black comics to ever really break through. Um, Cosby, I think, being maybe the first uh, to ever break through to the white audiences. And he did so uncompromisingly. Like, for instance, he got a call from Jack Parr to be on the Jack Parr show. And he said, I won't. And so Parr called him personally. He says, why won't you come do my show? And he said, because you always have black, com- you have black comics on doing comedy, but then you never let us sit down and talk to us. And he says, come on the show, you can sit down and talk to me. And so he was the first com- black comic ever to sit on the couch on The Tonight Show. Wow. So, I mean, Dick and Dick Gregory <clears throat> was quite funny. But as the years went on, his causes kind of overcame that funniness, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. where he was basically marching and doing all kinds of things. And he instilled this isn't in his children, too. He would take his children on these marches. And he was arrested a couple of times, if I remember correctly. So this is just a, a brilliant person who got about a half a day's worth of accolades. Until Jerry Lewis dies. Okay. Uh, <laughs> much older. Well, much older, 91 as opposed to 86. It's amazing, comedians, how how long they live, you know? Seem to, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they either live long or they die young. Bill Hicks, 32, you know? But uh, anyway, so, um, uh, you know, uh, Jerry Lewis dies, and everybody's talking about Jerry Lewis, and, and with good cause. I mean, I even went on the Internet and did a, did a piece on my feelings about Jerry Lewis and so on, which got me something like almost over 2,000 people watching it, which is pretty good for me. Um, and uh, so there was a great interest in Jerry Lewis dying. Uh, this from a, from a bunch of people in America who always kind of disregarded Jerry Lewis in the later years, uh, as did I. I mean, I when I was a kid, I, I talked about this on this thing. When I was a kid, Jerry Lewis was my hero. I mean, I loved him, but I was I was like thirteen, maybe twelve. I can't remember. Um, Nineteen fifty-two, maybe you know. And Martin and Lewis were like my favorites, and Jerry Lewis was my favorite. In fact. When I first went into the broadcasting business and I needed a name, I took my last name, Bennett, and my first name was Jerry. I was Jerry oh. Bennett. Uh, I know that's embarrassing to now, but it, uh, it was Jerry Bennett. So that's how much I loved Jerry Lewis. I loved him, too. <laughs> you know? And if you go back and you watch Martin and Lewis Colgate Comedy Hours, for instance, they were incredible. It was one of the best team acts ever, uh, basically because it was a nightclub act more than it was like a movie act. Abbott and Costello were a movie act. Laurel and Hardy, a movie act. The, uh, the Ritz Brothers, a movie act. But they, 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 they were a nightclub. And so when they would go out there with the band in back of them and D- Dean and Jerry would do their bits, it was just some some of the funniest comedy you'll ever see. And go back and watch some of those old Colgate comedy hours, and you'll just be amazed by what you see with them. Well, uh, I've seen old pictures of them. It looked like they were like almost like the Beatles. Those people outside their hotel. They were <laughs> that that was in the hotel. I found out Shecky brought this up to me, and he sent me a clip of it. 
uh, that wasn't a hotel. That was actually the the dressing room at the Paramount Theater. Oh, okay. And they stood there in the windows throwing pictures of themselves out to a crowd that literally, I mean, y- you couldn't see the end of the crowd. That's how big the crowd was. It was it was so reminiscent of what later happened to the Beatles that it was incredible. Yeah. They, I mean, they were they were stars. I mean, they were absolute stars. And um, I always, um, I loved Jerry Lewis back in those days. But as I grew up, as I matured, I matured out of Jerry Lewis's comedy. Because it was just a little too broad. It was a little too silly. It, uh, you know, I became sophisticated where comedy was concerned. Did you ever feel that way about him? Or did you continue to see him as being funny? I loved him up until I was back, probably my early twenties. But uh, yeah, then some of it got some. Of, some of the comedy was really bad, but some of it looks back like the Nutty Professor. I think still the holds. Nutty up. Professor is is one of the most brilliant comedies ever made. And um, you know, I was talking with Shecky about bad movies he made, and uh, I'm trying to remember which one he made that Shecky said was just terrible. Oh, the uh, the. Uh, it was the one he made, I think, like at the Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami. He made the whole movie at a, at a hotel in Miami, and it was the Bellboy. Uh, the Bellboy. He said it's the worst, worst movie Lewis ever made. You know, I said worse than Boeing. Boeing. You know. Uh, <laughs> you know, there, 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 but there was a lot of bad Lewis. But at, that, bad. At, that, at that point, I didn't pay much attention to Jerry Lewis except for the telethon. Which, you know, was a yearly tradition for me. Not that I would sit there and watch the whole thing, but I would watch him sing You Never Walk Alone. And I tell the story on this piece that I did about how one year I was working at a radio station, WMCA, and the telethon was coming up, and I said, well, you know, uh, I I don't think of much of of Jerry Lewis any longer as a performer because I don't think he's up to snuff anymore. But I do think that what he does for muscular dystrophy is outstanding. And, and I have to hand it to him. And I, I, the station had been sued on several occasions. And it, it stop me if you've heard the story, folks, because it's on the piece that I did. Uh, this station had been, like, sued or complained to by the FCC for not giving people equal time to reply to what might be a slight. Okay? So every time they ever even perceived that there was a slight against somebody, they would send them a letter saying, you have the right to reply, so they wouldn't get into trouble. Well, they <laughs> sent one out on what I said by saying, Mr. Bennett said that you were uh, uh, something like, I can't remember what I said exactly, not up to snuff as a performer any longer, blah, blah, blah. They didn't say the rest of it about how I said how he was did a wonderful thing for muscular dystrophy. They just might quote that he was not up to snuff. <laughs> I'm watching the uh, Jerry Lewis telethon. It's the end. I always made sure I, uh, last half hour, I would always tune it in because I had to see him go sit down on that stool and start crying and doing his theatrics. To see if he could get through the song. (laughs) Yeah, choke up as he's singing, you'll never walk alone. And he says, well, it's come that time. And he said... uh, I have just one special thing to say, and that's to that disc jockey in San Francisco. I hope I'm good enough to do this. (laughs) And I looked at everybody in the room watching it with me, and they were all kind of looking at me. And one of the people said, he's talking to you. (laughs) And I said, yes. He said, And he said, this song is for you. And he dedicated, you'll never walk alone to me. Not by name, but as that disc jockey in San Fran, in New York City. Oh, that's awesome. And it couldn't have been anybody else, you know. Because nobody else sent him a letter saying, this guy said this about him. I wish I could remember what it was exactly I said about him. But it was, it was, it was, uh, uh, it was a side remark to the remark I was trying to get to, that he did a a wonderful job of, of, of raising money for these kids. And in later years, he became de classe to the uh, muscular dystrophy people, and they kicked him off the telethon, finally. And it was at that point they stopped making money. 
<laughs> so, yeah. you know, he, Brilliant move. he was important to them. No matter how bad they thought he was, no matter how corny they thought he was, people tuned in for that corniness and tuned in for that, that attitude, you know. So it's kind of kind of sad, you know. But, I mean, so when he died, you know, I don't know about you, but whenever somebody like that dies, I, a little bit of me dies with him. You know, because it's just another person that's, you know, that's gone that um, uh, that, that makes me realize my own mortality. Yeah, I actually saw him when I was about 20 in an airport, and I was so starstruck. I was just almost foaming at the mouth, and he looked over me and said, Hi, kid, and that just, like, made my day. Oh, really? Yeah. He said, Hi, kid. Son of a bitch. Well, you met him. I never met him. You know. Yeah, I was just like, uh, I've never been so starstruck. He, I was like 20 years old I'm, then. But. I'm glad I never interviewed him, though. And I'll tell you why. I saw an interview that he did with a Hollywood reporter. And the, it, 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 is, it is amazing. He oh, sits, the last year? He, something like that, yeah. And he goes, would you say the best time you ever had was working with Dean Martin? He went, yes. Yeah. Every, yes, every no. answer was yes, <laughs> no. Uh-huh, maybe. And then after seven minutes, he says, well, that's it. And he takes the mic off and he leaves. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I got him on a bad day, exactly. I would have to live with that interview. You know, and and um, he supposedly wasn't all that cooperative in interviews. I mean, he, no, I heard he was not, probably not the nicest guy either. But, uh, he... he, he you know, uh, there are people, who was it? Bill, Gilbert Gottfried was asked to talk about him on like TMZ or something like that. And he said, you know, he may not have been a nice guy. But like the old saying goes, he was nice to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know? And so it only matters to me whether he was well, probably nice depends what day you got him on, maybe. But he also had, uh, I think he actually was not a bad uh, dramatic actor, at least judging from King of Comedy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've actually seen clips. That's all that you can lay your hands on. Clips of the what would have been his worst movie ever, which was The Day the Clown Cried. Oh, I gotta see that. And, and it wound up online a few years ago. Somebody found what was, I don't know, it was something like a rehearsal reel or a, uh, but it, it had him in the complete clown makeup. And uh, it was it was standard clown makeup, you know, the phony smile and all that. And the plot of the show, the movie, is about a clown who leads kids into the showers at Auschwitz. <laughs> Great humor. Come on, kids, let's go. <laughs> no, no, the picture wasn't meant to be. Uh, uh, a comedy. It was meant to be serious. It was meant to be his tour de force. This was going to be his legacy. You know, this was going to be his great film where he showed what he could do. And it never got released. I don't know why it didn't get released. Either the people who owned it didn't release it or whatever. But uh, it supposedly somewhere the holy grail is to find a completed copy of The Day the Clown Cried. And there was a rumor there was a guy in Hollywood who had a copy of it. And he would literally charge people to come over to his house and watch it. And so some people have seen it and said it is absolutely ghastly. Well, I thought Pat and Oswald had a yearly thing where he had, he had the script where they'd have a reading of they'd it. They'd have a reading of it, yes. Yeah. But uh, that's not good enough. No, you got to see. And, you know, Jerry, when he did King, King of Comedy, although he was playing himself, kind of. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty good acting job. Yeah, know? not bad. You know? Um, and that's a film I've come to actually like. I didn't like it when I first saw it. And as years have gone on, I've come to like it. And most comedians love that film. You know? Um, and then, you know, he did a couple of films a few years ago, uh, and, and they weren't bad. They were just, you know, the same old stuff. And then, of he course... He did a film with Mort Saul a couple of years ago, but I heard it was pretty bad. Really? Yeah, where he played... Kevin Pollack plays Jerry's son, 
and I forget what the, uh, I don't even know what the plot was about, but I heard it got pretty bad reviews. Let me see here. Well, wait a minute. I can go to, I can go right over here to um, IMDB, or I am not DB. Hey, I'll just start something called I am not DB. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, Mort Saul. Mort Saul. Saul. Okay. It's the Good Years. No. Let's see here. What 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 films did he do? Uh, boy, he didn't do many. He just no. did one that I can see. Oh no, The Good Years. I don't want The Good Years. I want Mort Saul. There we go. There we go. Mort Saul. Okay. Uh, Max Rose. I think that's it. Is that it? Wait a minute. So. Hold on a second. Uh, Max Rose. Star Jerry Lewis. That's it. Yeah. And uh, Jerry Lewis and Dean Stockwell, Kevin Pollack, Fred Willard. Uh, uh, Mort's all is all the way down on the list, but it. Uh, um, and who directed it? Uh, Daniel Noah directed it. This wasn't a Jerry Lewis directed film. No, they said uh, Lewis couldn't remember. It was like he'd just sit there and say line because he couldn't remember anything. Yeah. Wow. That's a uh, yeah. I well, uh, there, there's a film I guess we didn't know about. Um, I guess it didn't do that well because I don't remember it even being released. Maybe it wasn't released. Maybe it escaped. Uh, <laughs> the old tales. Yeah. Who do you think? When I was a kid, yeah. Jerry Lewis had a uh, he had a, a show on. I think it was ABC. Yeah. That was such a disaster, and he got paid so much money for it. It only lasted like thirteen weeks. And what he did, I think, to make up for it is he came back with another show on NBC where he actually did sketches and things like that. And it was f considered fairly successful. Um, but you're right. The one at ABC was just, he tried to do a talk show, like a late night talk show, and he just wasn't capable of it. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that was a major failure. See, guy dies, and what are we talking about? His failures. His <laughs> But we still loved him. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you've got to, you know, I don't think. Uh, uh, Jerry only surpassed himself after Martin and Lewis by about three or four pictures, you know. Uh, the first one was The Delicate Delinquent. Wow, how do I remember this stuff? And I can't remember my wife's name. Uh, delicate del del the Delicate Delinquent. And then that was, I think, followed by The Nutty Professor. And the delicate delinquent was horrible. You know, just Jerry aping, being, being the little monkey. But Nutty Professor was, it was a brilliant concept. It, it just worked, you know. And um, he was very funny. And then uh, Cinderfella, I remember, I talk about it on the uh, video, so I'll, I'll refer people to the video. But basically, uh, Cinderella saved my life. I was thinking about committing suicide when I went to see that picture. Really? And, and it, <laughs> it, it taught me that comedy is maybe one of the best healers you can have to pain. Uh, I, I saw the value, the true value of comedy to the human race. And, and uh, uh, I, I, you know, um, I was just um, overwhelmed by it. What I I went into this theater in Sausalito, the Marin Theater, and I um, sat there because I was depressed. My girlfriend had gotten pregnant, was going to give birth to a baby, and so on. And I was she didn't want anything to do with me, and I was suicidal. And I went in and I just figured I got nothing better to do a Jerry Lewis movie. And all of a sudden, I found myself laughing, <laughs> and and I had gone from misery to laughing. Of course, I was kept you off of the bridge. Yeah, I mean, I was crying after the movie, but while the movie was on, it took me away. And I said, at that moment, I realized the true power of comedy and why I wanted to have something to do with it. Okay, That's great. Um, and that being silly and being goofy is is not a be not a terrible art. It's a healing art, and uh, it, it made me realize that. So you know. I, I I have to say that the overall uh, 
the life of Jerry Lewis for the past 50 years has maybe not been great, but <laughs> man, when he was on top of me, Martin and Lewis, God, what a phenomenon they were. Yeah. And for the longest time, Dean Martin was a bigger star than Jerry Lewis. And everybody thought it was going to be the other way around. They thought Dean Martin would just disappear. But he did. Yeah, he had a good career. Yeah. He had and, a great uh, Frank career. Frank Sinatra brought uh, Dean back and reunited them in the 76 Telethon. Yep. Hey, we've run out of time again. Oh. I love talking with you. I love talking with you because you get me to talk. Well, because you know so much crap. It's great. And, I mean, And uh, I could tell all these stories without... You know, without you, but it wouldn't be as much fun, and I wouldn't have somebody to focus my attention on. And I, th- I focus you, but I love Jerry Lewis, so we got uh, we could talk more about him and, maybe next. And time. don't forget, there are Jerry Lewis words. <laughs> like, what are you maybe. having? What are you having for breakfast? Riboflavin. <laughs> Ribo, bioflavonoid. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of Jerry Lewis words. Hey, thank you. Bubs and let's do, it, me, let's, buddy. let's do it again next week, okay? You got it. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And hi, how are you? Alex here, and uh, we're ready to kind of roll with our uh, our talk portion of the show. Let me pull my shirt out. I like it when it's when it's down uh, and uh, move the cap up so you can see my face a little bit there we go so hi how are you what's happening uh, before we uh, before we go any further i thought i'd show you something uh, shecky sent me this um he's always good at finding old footage and things like that you know and, and over the weekend i decided to just do a tribute to jerry lewis um i was just using uh, facebook live the very cut down version the one you just click from your browser to use which i find is not as good because it doesn't give the same kind of great picture you're looking at right now okay but anyway uh, because we're using another system of facebook live to get onto facebook live anyway i did about a 13 minute tribute to jerry lewis and it was one of the most popular things i've i've done here in a long time it has, between a couple of uh, iterations of it, gotten close to 2,000 viewers. Uh, and that is, uh, I can verify that those are users, actual people who, who watch the damn thing. And uh, I appreciate all the nice words people had to say about it because it was, it was kind of a heartfelt kind of thing. And I, I had just come back from shopping at Costco and on my watch came the message that Jerry Lewis had died. And I just felt compelled to do something about it, to say something about it. And that's the great thing about Facebook Live. You can be in Rome or anywhere in the world, and you can just talk into your phone or uh, talk into a camera and say how you feel about something. And I find those things, oddly enough, get me more of a listenership than these shows do. I don't know why I waste my time doing this. I could just go and do little 15-minute things and get 2,000 viewers and... uh, uh, not have to, you know, work my ass off like I do here. Um, so, I mean, but anyway, uh, in it I talked about how Jerry Lewis had been and Dean Martin had been so popular that they were like the Beatles, okay? And I, it was hard for me to describe it. And I said that they were uh, looking out of their hotel room, but it actually was their dressing room at the Paramount Theater here in New York City. And crowds had... Um, grown in outside to see them and so they opened the window and started uh, uh, throwing stuff down to them you remember the Beatles they did the same thing they opened the windows and looked out the window and the girls screamed and everything else I want you to watch this this is the actual footage I was talking about and Shecky sent it to me watch this that's the Paramount Theater Look at that. Look at that. It's like you, you'd think the Beatles were out, up there, right? From all the kind of footage you would see. And here they come. There's Jerry. And there's Dean. And uh, they're throwing pictures out to people. Uh, and uh, they're mugging for him and 
doing all the things that Martin and Lewis kind of like to do. And th this was wonderful. This was a wonderful crowd of people. Wait, wait a minute. They'll take, they'll take some more shots of the crowd. Look at this. Look at this. Look. That's how popular Martin and Lewis were. Now, to a lot of people who weren't around for Martin and, and Lewis, uh, you don't you don't notice. Uh, Mike is on. You, you don't have any idea how big they were. Look at that. Come on up, everybody. his hat no he didn't lose his hat look at that for a comedy team and, and a nightclub team at that. I don't think we can hear. What? Say something into the microphone. Say how happy you are. Say, oh. Tell how happy you are. We just want everybody to know that we're the happiest guys in the whole, whole world. Yeah, we are. It's the greatest thrill of our lives. My this, name is MacArthur. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Hey, Dean and Jerry, Dean and Jerry. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Try to get a plug on the picture. Come on in. Come on in and see my boy. That's my boy right here. That's my boy, him, man. Now we're gonna, the new picture open to the Paramount. Yeah, August 1st. All over 1st. the country, August 1st. That's my boy. That's my boy. Look at that. Everybody in for coffee now. Come on coffee. in. Go through the door. Come on in. And those aren't Put adults. A lot of those Outside. are just Everybody kids. Watch. But anyway, you got an idea of what it was like with Martin and Lewis back in those days, and it was an amazing, amazing thing going on there. Uh, just uh, incredible. Uh, so, you know, uh, I just thought, you, I thought we'd see that. And thank you to Shecky for sending that to me. It was on YouTube somewhere, and if you want to go back and look at it, well, you can look at it here by just re-watching the show when we're over with, or you can go to, to YouTube, and I think it is... Uh, 
it's there. Anyway, it's time to turn on the uh, the uh, Skype so we can talk to people. Watch. Uh, watch will be the first one. Uh, anyway, I mean, somebody tried to call me before we went on the air, and I accidentally had the phone on, and uh, that's what you heard ringing during some commercials and stuff like that because the person couldn't even wait to hear what was going on with the show before they called. And that kind of bothers me. And I'll tell you why it bothers me, because I'd like to think that people watch the show uh, and, and want to be part of the show and, he, you know, know what's going on with the show. But they don't. They, some of them, at least this one person, just calls. He doesn't know what we're doing and not doing. And as soon as he sees that my light has gone on, he calls. And, uh, you know, we may be talking about stuff or we may be showing Martin and Lewis like we just did. And, uh, and the person calls not knowing what we had done. And uh, that bothers me. That does bother me a great deal. And here he is. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there's, uh, there he is. There's Mike. Mike, who always calls e even when he doesn't know what's going on on the program. Well... Been kind of busy around here. Well, yeah, but you know, it, you really should listen to the show and see what's happening before you decide to call. True. It's very rude of you to just call for the sake of calling with not hearing what we're doing and the effort we put into this program. And you called before the show even started, and you know the first, well, maybe you don't know the first half hour is always something else going on. True. You know, so. I, I have lectured you now. Uh, how are you this evening? Good, good. Hey, you want to buy a, a building? Why would I want to buy a building? It's up for sale at the plaza. It's up for sale. Uh, the plaza hotel? Yeah. It was bought by some Chinese, I think, a while back, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it said the plaza. I don't know which one it could have been. Well, I'm saying the plaza was bought by the Chinese, I think, a while back, or some, I don't know. It was, but it was sold a while back. Here comes, uh, here comes, um, hey, back from vacation, huh? That's right. Je Jeff Stein, ladies and gentlemen, is back from vacation. Back from Maine. Back from Maine. How was it up in Maine? It was, uh, fun. It was fun? Crazy. Yeah. We got to see some people that I haven't seen for 30 years. Really? Yeah, from New, Ze New Zealand. And how old have they gotten? <laughs> <laughs> they look great. <laughs> I, I always hate meeting people I haven't seen in 30 years because I look at them and go, do I look that bad? <laughs> you know, you compare it against yourself. Oh, hey, we got a whole bunch of people calling at the same time. Uh, here comes Phil Meyer. Uh, I, 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 let's see here. And, oh, uh, Bree is calling as well. Now, the question is, are they going to all... There we go. They're all... Are uh, Bree, are you there? Bree, are you there? Yeah. No, Bree's not there. And uh, Phil, uh, they're all not there. What's the problem? Oh, boy. Not one of these nights. Let me see here. Let me call Rob. Let me op uh, add Rob to the group. And there's a, there's a problem adding people to the group. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Well, that's a problem. Uh, let me hang up and restart my Skype here and see what, uh, what the problem is because uh, I... You know, uh, we can't, we're, we're having trouble getting people online here. Hold on, Hold on. and we'll get back to you. Okay? Uh, let me see here. Let me hang, uh, get rid of Skype. Let me sign out of Skype. Let me, um, okay, I'm completely sound. Uh, and let me just quit Skype completely. That would be good as well because uh, then it starts fresh and see what happens. I don't know what, uh, here we go, quit Skype. Yes, quit Skype. And then I start Skype again. You'll hear that familiar Skype sound when I 
put in the, um, let's see here, 21, okay, sign in, there we go, and it's signing in, and we're, we're, uh, we're online, uh, and uh, I see that everybody is there, okay, here comes Jeff Stein, so I add Jeff to the group, hello Jeff. And there's, uh, the, the, all of a sudden, all the people that I, oh boy, this is really weird. Add to group, Jeff Stein. Uh, I've got Bree, but I don't have Phil. Wow, this is. Remember what happened last time you said that? That you had to uh, add a person? No, I, I know what I'm doing, Mike. Okay, okay. I hate it when people play Sunday morning quarterback. Let me call, uh, let me see here. Phil, add to group. Okay, Phil, are you added to the group? Let's see here. Where's the group? I can't even find the group now. I don't know. It must have worked. I see you. You see me, but I don't I don't know whether everybody, everybody else, else can see you. Hold on oh. a second. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me hang up on you too, Phil. I, d I don't even know. Oh, here we go. There we go. We've got, let me, let me call um, uh, Patrick since I had to hang up on him. Uh, hmm. Let me see here. I don't know. Couldn't, couldn't do it. I'll add to group. Okay. Add group to call. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, we're, get, we're, we're slowly getting there. Okay, folks. Uh, let me see here. Let me go this to this. Patrick. Yeah. Let me go to this here. Okay. So everybody can see everybody. Um, there's Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Good evening to you. Hi. There we go. Now it's all coming into, 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 coming to fruition as it were. Uh, um, so, okay. Uh, uh, it'll work. Okay. That'll work. How are y'all? <laughs> now that I've solved the problem or thought that I solved the problem, um, we're in operation. Huh? We're in operation. We're in operation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you got seven within the first couple of minutes. So, what? You, know, you got seven within the first couple well, of minutes. Well, that's if you stupid. include me. I don't include me. Hello, Bree. Where are, are you Hello. still in? Are you still in the United States? Yeah, I'm still in the U.S. Yeah, still in the U.S. And you're where again? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, and a hello, of course, to Patrick, who has uh, joined us, and Phil, and Mike, and Rob. And it, you have bad weather down there, Rob, at all today? Uh, no, just hot. Very sunny and really hot again. Because oh. I'm seeing lightning outside my window. Really? Which isn't a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> then they, they, they sent out a, a warning. By the way, I did something today. And I, I, I still can't get it to work just right. But a lot of you, uh, who uh, may, some of you may not be on the list, so if you want it, write me and then I will get it to you. I have a new email address. And the reason I did it, and Rob was talking about it to me the other day, was that, you know, I went, God forbid I should leave Spectrum, which I plan on doing and probably going over to Fios, and I lose my internet address. So I, I went and got a Gmail address, uh, which I won't say here over the air because you'll have to write me. Well, I guess you wouldn't be able to know how to write me if I didn't. Write the old address. Write the old address. You should have all gotten a mail. I know I sent you one, Rob, and I sent yeah. you one, Phil, and I sent uh, one to, uh, I think, Patrick. Did you get one? Piece of email from me? Uh, but, huh? Probably. I haven't sent my email yet. Yeah. Well, if, if you don't, just let me know and I'll... I mean, I don't. You can still write me, I suppose, at the old address because it's still working. But uh, uh, I and I felt I had to do it, but now I I can't get it to work right on my iPad. I can't get it to work right on my iPhone, and sometimes it just disappears. I can't make it stay, you know. And a lot of the stuff shows up as junk, which isn't. And I, yeah, that that's a that's a process of. Uh, I don't know Gmail that well, but maybe there's a way to adjust their uh, level of spam filtering. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be that slow process of going through everything and, and you know, s telling the system, no, this isn't spam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? 
Well, you know, um, uh, but um, but how do you get it so that it doesn't just eliminate uh, the uh, the mail? When you say eliminate, you mean eliminate the account or no, the mail itself? No, it seems itself? like I have a piece of mail and then I'll go, uh, I'll, uh, it'll suddenly disappear. Or I go to uh, the, the online Gmail and it's not there. You can tell it to put it in a special box like uh, either junk or trash or make a box for it. That for what? If it's for what? Spam, for what? Uh, in, in the Gmail. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, I haven't I don't use it that often, but if you go to uh, the security or uh, you can tell it uh, what to do with the junk mail. So if no, you don't not, want it destroyed. Well, I'm not talking about junk mail now. I'm just talking about regular mail. Like if I got well, mail from you, it might wind up and then all of a sudden you disappear or you don't show up. You show up on one, but you don't show up on the other suspected uh, junk or suspected spam. Or, no, uh, I look for the person and they're not there. Oh, you know, and uh, yet I will then look at the Gmail site and it'll be there. But then uh, I go back and it's disappeared. I even mean, from the Gmail site itself. Yeah. Or from my Gmail on my iPad. I mean, they did, I can't figure it out. It's not it's not grabbing. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't use I, mean, I have a Gmail account, but I, I I did it when I originally got my first Android phone because you had to have it. Yeah. And, and so I never really use Gmail. I don't like Gmail, so I, I don't know it that well. I do know that there are certain mail systems that if you don't, if if it because if every every device you have connected, yeah. if it's not a certain kind of mail, and I can't remember right now the the the, the kind of mail that is, but if there's a certain kind of mail that if you every device if you if you, it doesn't delete it on all devices. It doesn't show it as red on all devices. If you move it to a folder, it doesn't move it on all devices. There's a kind of email that does it, and and a kind of email that doesn't do that. And it's I got to the point where I got so fed up. Hotmail is one of those that doesn't do it. So yeah. if you have a Hotmail account, and then you connect it to your Mac, mm -hmm. and you connect it to your iPhone and your iPad, if you read a message on your iPhone, and then you look at it on your Mac. The, it doesn't show up as red. It doesn't synchronize all the mail. And that drove me crazy. And, and that's what drove me to, to eventually getting my own uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Office 365 email. Yeah, but I, 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 have, I have Outlook.com, you know. Outlook.com is Hotmail if it's free. If they it, just changed the name. Uh, well, I, I was using it through 365. You were? Yeah. So then, why did you need a Gmail account? Who is who is trying to sign on to my? Somebody's trying to sign on to the server. Really? Who the hell is it? Who could it be? It'd be only be. Uh, oh wait a minute, Damien. Yeah, well, I think he's uh, camping or something. Oh, Damien didn't do a live oh, show. No, let me see here. Hold on. I, I don't know. Somebody's, somebody's trying to hack you. <laughs> Oh, I know, who, oh, it been, I know who it is. It's the Chinese. It's, it's, it's Jack. <laughs> it's Jack. He uh, he goes in and removes his last program before he goes on the air. So that's what was doing. I was just wondering who who who's suddenly uh, using the server. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't know. I've, I've maybe I'm going to have to send everybody a message and go back and say, you know, use my old email. There's one way I can keep using my old email. I found out. I can check, can, check I, Alex. I, check to see yeah. that I'm IMAP I M A P is enabled for your Google account. Really? Yes, that's what I just Googled it. Um, IMAP is the type of mail you want. Log into your Gmail account. Use the link, whichever URL you normally use. Well, I, uh, I have it, so it comes in on my uh, so it comes in settings. on my iPad mail. And uh, let me see here. Let me go to preferences. And let me go to mail. There we go. And uh, then I go to the accounts. And then I go to, um, where is it, Gmail. And uh, it doesn't say anything about IMAP or anything else. Yeah, but you have to do it from your Gmail account itself. Oh, I do? Yes. 
Oh, you, you, you got to make sure IMAP is turned on. Yeah. IMAP is turned on on my Gmail account. So where do Yeah, and you do that by going to um you you go to the the gear. Yeah. Oh, I see. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh let me see here. I go to the gear. What gear? It says here from the from oh, the, the gear, gear pop-up oh, menu there you go. choose settings. Yeah. And, and it then says click, settings. And then click forwarding and pop slash IMAP. Uh Forwarding and slash pop IMAP. Where am I? Where, where, where do we? Where do we get that now? <coughs> forwarding. Uh, there should be a setting there called forwarding slash IMAP pop. Now you're being tutored by a top HP executive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't get that when you call the Philippines for help. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't seem to say anything here. Oh wait a minute. Forwarding. I uh, pop an IMAP. Okay. Well, right. Now what do I do? In the IMAP access section, make sure enable IMAP is selected. Leave other settings alone. Enable IMAP, IMAP, IMAP is is done. Okay. Uh, was that done, or did you just click it? Huh? No. Was it was that do, it was done? Yeah. It was done. Okay. Oh, when when I mark a message in IMAP as as deleted, auto expunge off. Wait for the client to update the server. Okay. Wait for okay. Uh, auto expunge is off. Archive message default. Move message to the trash. Now, when message is marked as deleted and expunged from the last visible IMAP folder, archive the message. Immediately delete the message forever. I'll I'll go back to this later. And yeah, figure you all want to take out. a look at some of the, the the settings you have in your account. That's what might be deleting the messages. Well, he said something about immediately delete the email forever, right, right. and uh, that I guess you don't want to check. No. So as soon as you look at an email, if it's getting deleted, M move the message to trash. Yeah, archive yeah. the message is default. So I could move the message to trash, right? Yeah, but you, you wouldn't want to do that by default. Uh, okay, yeah, but he so can look at his trash before he deletes his trash. Yeah. And then uh, Boy, it, it, it is Trump spouting shit tonight, man. I I thought it was a good rally. Uh, matter of fact, you know, what is it a rally for? I, I guess, oh, I, it's I just a, it's an thing. ego rally. I really think well, he could win this thing. He speaks to his uh, to his people. He yeah. communicates with them. If it's and not, you know a, what he does? He goes through and he explains every little thing. He'll say, "They said I said this," and then he goes and he actually reads all of his statements, all about well, Charlottesville well, and all that. Well, let me, just, let me start. Let me start from the beginning, and that the beginning is last night. Okay, uh, and 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 not that I disagree with some of the contentions he has. Oh, here comes Tim. Uh, not that I, I uh, uh, argue with some of the contentions he made last night, like we shouldn't be nation building. You know, right. I, I've, that's always bothered me about us going into countries and trying to bend them to our way. Uh, but let's face it, if tomorrow Afghanistan wants to go communist, we're going to fight that, no, ma no matter what he says about not nation building. Um, uh, so I, I, you know, I, I, I think there's a difference between what he said and what really he he means. Uh, How come everybody likes what he said? You know, both the left and the right. Well, yeah, I agree with a lot of what. No, he said. well, I mean, I liked it because he did say we're not in the business of nation building, right. but we want to kill the bad guys. Well, the word "kill" bothered me to begin with. I think you, you know, we want to contain the bad guys. We want to. Uh, put the bad guys out of business, blah, 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 blah. Using the word kill just doesn't hit it right with me. Secondly, uh, somebody's got to rejigger his teleprompters. Uh, there is such a thing as a teleprompter that can be right in front of you. It's about uh, five rows back, and it's a big, giant LED screen that puts your words on there. A lot of TV shows use it when you see... Uh, uh, somebody like the host of American Idol doing his bit. Uh, it, he's got one of those in the back of the room that he's reading off of. He looked terrible. There was no eye contact with his audience. 
Occasionally, he'd just move his head to try and pretend like he was, but he was, he was always, you could tell he was reading a piece of flat surface, okay? Tonight, tonight Alex, he was reading from uh, uh, notes, written notes yeah. on paper. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, that may be a lot better, although with him, you really don't want him to go off script. But somebody but he's got the there now. I see no, it. No, but, but somebody, somebody should sit down with him and work out a system, Here. you know, where he uses it uh, correctly. Yes, Patrick. Two things. Uh, I'm here to address the military last night. So um, they were already given instruction not to react to anything that he said. Right. So him, him being straight-faced and as awkward as it looked didn't bother me because of who he was addressing. It's not like tonight's rally or whatever. And the other thing that I will say, the best thing that he said last night that President Obama irritated the shit out of me with is President Trump said, we're not going to give timelines, I'm not going to say when. And that's the best thing that the president can do because he's listening to his general, including his chief of staff and secretary of defense. And they probably all said to him, don't go out and don't ever give a timeline on when you're going to do shit. Don't alert the enemy Patrick. to what you're going to do. Hey, Alex, I got a question. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let, let Patrick finish his thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, and now it's something that when President Obama said that we're going to pull out of Afghanistan by whatever it was, you never give a timeline. I mean, that was the dumbest thing he had to give me. Uh, I was surprised to see that Trump actually was listening to his military who are likely telling him, if you have changed your mind on Afghanistan yeah. and we're going to do something there, then you cannot reveal what the plan is. Because it, it, despite what Nancy Pelosi went out and yapped about that the American people deserve to know more. No, we don't need to know strategy. That's for the military. That is not for the civilian fucking population. Civilians need to know we either won or we didn't. We don't need to know the strategy ahead of time. Right. The military does only. So mm -hmm. I would say on that aspect, I had to really tip my hat to him. Not to him personally, but listening to the military, where Obama seemed to ignore them, and he was yapping about when we're going to do this, that, and the other. Now, here's the caveat. We stay off of Twitter if we're ever going to invade or do anything militarily. That's what the question. Well, you know, here's the problem. Here's, here's the problem. Uh, and I, I don't know what's wrong with your system uh, Patrick, when you start, it's really low, and then it ramps itself up, and you're loud enough. Uh, I've, I've tried to fix it. I, I have no idea. Yeah. Can you put the microphone closer, uh, that part closer to you? It, 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 I mean, nothing changed in the last however many years we've been doing I know. I know. It's just that this has suddenly been recently. Now, this may be a problem with, with Skype. It may have been... Some way they put stuff in to, you know, uh, do, uh, uh, what's the word we call it, uh, uh, what, mix minus. You might, you might go into your settings and, and check to what? see that your mic is turned up in your settings. It, it is settings. turned up, he says. You know, so. uh, and, uh, yeah, On the computer itself, not that, necessarily it, the program. You're using a Mac, you're using a Mac and i got to tell you, Skype for the Mac has its problems. Bose. Huh? It blows. It really blows. Yeah. Yep. Can I can I just answer to uh, 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 to Patrick's statement uh, that uh, George W. Bush also said uh, that he wasn't going to give timelines at, uh, for withdrawal, and uh, during Trump's campaign, he'd always said that he wasn't going to signal the bad guys and tell him. Uh, tell them, oh, we're going to bomb tomorrow, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. That has been Trump's attitude uh, ever since he started campaigning, uh, although he is uh, doing what he said he would do. He told them about the Syrian, the CIA operations in Syria. That we're was telling them what we're doing. That's top secret, maybe. 
right? Oh, the but CIA he told program in Syria. Other, he, but he told another leader. Um, <laughs> the enemy. He told, he told the Russians. The, well, the, stuff. the guy Russians, can't keep his uh, mouth shut. That's why I don't trust see, him. I got, I, yeah, that's, a, that's the impression I got from Pat. What Patrick was saying is I agree with that. But I, I still I agree with got, what I got said, the but you can't trust him. He's a liar. Well, I got the impression the whole time he was saying that he just wanted to belt out when he was going over there. I, I, I kind of felt that when he was talking. He also but, didn't give the troop number. He was asked how many troops, and he said he's not going to release that information. No. Uh, yeah, and everybody's trying to put a 4,500 number on it or something. You, you, know, you know the biggest problem with the speech last night? Mm. Two things. One, you can't trust anything he says, so he's not going to nation build. I don't trust him. But uh, it, those generals that are working for him are good. But you got to remember, when they're done with Trump, they're going to get very lucrative jobs in the military. Well, no, there's, there's also, there's also one thing about listening to your generals. I mean, you listen to them to a certain extent, but right. you still, but you the, still, you still, wait a minute, you still have to be the final arbiter of the whole thing. And when you, you don't absolutely. have, and when you don't have the depth of knowledge that you need for this job, like Donald Trump, you then just listen to them, and they're going to do anything that they feel. Uh, will, well, in many cases, uh, advance their career, you know. Just like Carl Icahn did. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, now, I will, will say, I will say that there have been a lot of generals over the years who have been very much against war. Eisenhower was a perfect example of that. Uh, absolutely. He warned us. He warned us about the military-industrial complex. But, right. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, Patrick has his hand up, and Bree, you wrote something, and I couldn't read it, about... Uh, how he can adjust his audio to, so it'll be working all the time? Yeah, there there is a setting uh, under call. Uh, there's a you know on the top bar. Mine says Skype, contacts, conversation, call. Under call audio settings, it's there. That's call all. audio settings. I, I now are you you what are you using though? What kind of machine? Um, I'm on an Acer. Yeah, okay, 10. but he's on a Mac, you yeah, see. Yeah. And it's it's oh okay. it's different on all of them. Yeah. You know. All the menus are different, everything's different. Yeah. Talk yeah. I, I, I know under call there is a thing called audio settings here uh, that I've never seen before. And well there it is. It comes up. I, I know where else I can go for that. Could but, be conversations. Who knows? I'm looking at who mine because I got a Mac. Okay. Who knows? I didn't mean to yeah, bring there's it back. A, there's but, one in there that says yeah. increase volume and decrease volume, but I'm not sure if that's output or input. Yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. Um, as far as them advancing their career, the majority of the people that are advising him aren't going to get much higher than they are. Yeah. Joint chiefs of staff yeah. are all admirals and four star generals and three stars. Uh, you've got, you know, all of the, uh, the command. Uh, well, yeah, I agree. I agree with you on that, Patrick. But I think there's another thing to be considered here, and it's we don't know these people personally, and we don't know how they feel about war. Some people, some of these people, love war. This is when they shine, you know. And others don't because they've seen the horrors of it, and 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 don't like it, you know. Abri, you have your hand up. Let let Bree say something a second, Patrick. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be here all the way till midnight, but I'd just like to ask. How many of you work with Afghanistanis? I have. <laughs> no, how many of you currently work with them or have several in the office? I, like, I right, do. You have several that you work with in the office daily? Yeah. From Afghanistan? Who go back uh, there every weekend? No. Every weekend? Uh, they, I have uh, a guy I'm thinking about taking in as a partner and a guy to buy me out who worked for me who's Afghani. He went back to Afghanistan and was a translator for two years for the government, and now he's come back and uh, uh, negotiating uh, him coming into the business. Okay. How long ago was he there? Uh, 2008. Oh. Okay. That's, that's a long time ago. Well, I've got a, uh, I've got a uh, Persian uh, warehouseman, too. <laughs> okay. How long has he been here? He's been with me for three years, and he's been here for 14, I think. Okay. Again, that's too long. I work with people who are literally there on the weekends and back because it's a one-hour flight. Oh. So, you know, when I talk to them, 
<laughs> you know, almost all of them, I, I asked them, what's, you know, what's happening, what's going to happen? And they said, uh, yeah, eventually the U.S. will leave and uh, the Taliban will, will be in control. And I said, really? I mean, aren't we, we're fighting them. We've got to get it there. We're putting lots of money. We have, this, you know, we're trying. He said, and uh, all of them. Oh, so they just say, no, it's. Hey, Lee, this is Tim. A quick question. Hmm? Yeah. A quick question. Um, I've heard that the Russians are starting to supply the Taliban or parts of the Taliban. Have Have you heard any rumors like that over there? Oh, sure. Um, everybody. Because they're, they're I, I've tweeted. I, tw I sent a tweet and got like thousands of hits, basically saying that Putin and Trump both are building up the military industrial complex, both to have money coming into their camp, into the, themselves personally under their, their campaigns. And the nuclear arms race and these little wars like this is a great way for them to take to 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 reap benefits for their their supporters and eventually for themselves I, I under the military industrial complex. I thought Afghanistan had minerals, and that's what uh, everybody is after. Uh, and yeah, we're going uh, to go, go over and take them, right? That's what Trump wants to do. Well, uh, what um, what it's I also war crime, heard, Phil. <laughs> what, what I also heard was that uh, the difference in Afghanistan is that you 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 can't have a nation. Uh, those people support. They support their tribes. They support their local uh, governments. But they don't think in in a national term. Uh, well, they, and, they, there's no central government. Well, then, then, you know the then I'm sorry, the Phil. Afghan I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Phil. But then you're going to have to deal with that situation. Well, that just happens to be the reality. Well, I mean, the, okay, then that's the reality. And why are we still there? You know, what happens if Middle tomorrow? What happens if tomorrow the Afghan government says, "America, get the fuck out of here"? Do well, we leave? Uh, 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 do we leave? Cars, I, is the president of Afghanistan, didn't he just welcome the Americans yeah. and say thank you for uh, 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 adding the support to Trump? Because he wants more money from us. Yes, Patrick. Um, you can milk us. I, I would honestly think that the majority of the commanders on the ground over there, the U.S. commanders, um, are tired of being there. And I really believe that that part of the strategy that would be here is to go in and try to use overwhelming force to eliminate the Taliban if possible. But they're tired of being there 16 years. I was thinking about it today that I have a number of friends of mine in our current military, and one of them, he'd been in since high school, which is going on over 20 years now. He's a lieutenant colonel. And I think about that, that some of these people that are over there have been there almost their entire career. And they want to be done with it. And I, I truly believe that that's part of the advice given to him is to drop. Just get in there. Let's get this fucking thing over. Oh. Yeah. He didn't define winning, though. He didn't define well, winning. Well, that, that's, yeah, that, that was the thing I was going to bring up, Tim, is that, uh, uh, you know, it, if you are going to send military somewhere for some kind of action, then there has to be something called winning. And what are you out to win? And I what? Don't and wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me finish. And what? All he has to do is, is be, is no. something that Obama didn't do, but, but, like but, no timeline. That's but, all he's okay. got to do. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, what constitutes winning? And if you don't have something that no, constitutes I, I winning, agree with you. I'd be, then, I'd be then are you going to be? I absolutely agree with that. Are you going to be well, there forever? What he did say was get the Taliban out, get, get return the country back to them, and and the problem with that is, you're gonna, they're gonna get you know unless you train them or build, the same problem is gonna happen again. They couldn't keep them we, out once. We went in and decimated the yeah, Taliban. How are you gonna if you may remember, at one point we went in and decimated the uh, the Taliban, and, and as soon as the dust cleared, they were back. And it wasn't because right. we left or anything like that. They well, just came back. They've retaken 70% of the land that we had taken, and they have taken it back. And they'll do it again. You know, oh, this is a yeah. I, contract uh, out to the mafia. Roaches. Yeah. Uh, we've been joined by Renee, by the way, and that, I think, makes it a full house, doesn't it? 
it, yeah. it, it makes it. Well, no, it actually makes it. No, it makes it a royal flush because. No, eleven's a flush. But, but wait a minute, there's five and there's five. I see, yeah. No. Well, that five and five is ten. Lately. And then with me, it's eleven. <laughs> Trump, it's nine. <laughs> it takes one with me, it's eleven. With, what, do we, what does everybody think about a viceroy? Hmm? A viceroy. Isn't it like a leader? I thought you said fibroid. That's like something from Stalin. Fibroid. Fibroid. <laughs> <It's 11. laughs> viceroy? Oh, yeah. He wants to put in a viceroy to rule Afghanistan. Oh, that would be stupid. This fucking thing is a waste of it. <laughs> Hi, Somebody with the authority <laughs> of a viceroy. Like, it's a colony. But a viceroy. Can it be him? Yeah, we should leave Trump there. Yeah. We'll see you in a couple of years. We'll see you in three years. <laughs> Send him over there. Yeah. You know when it's one uh, when he has a uh, Trump cell there. Then he runs. Okay, see you later. Do you know what his first solution was? He was going to fire the general over there. That's yeah. always his first solution. Let's fire the general. We'll get somebody else and they'll fix it. Let's fire Let's, my attorney. We'll get another one. Yeah. Uh, I'll save on salaries. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Mike. How are you going to stop the Taliban? The Taliban goes over to Pakistan. If you step over Pakistan... You know, Pakistan's going to say something. Am I right or wrong? All I'm saying is that, you know, haven't we learned after, what is it, 17 years now? Yeah, it's been about 16 years, at least 16 years. Oh, yeah, because it's getting close to 9 11. Again. It, 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 well, what I'm saying is, it, 16 years we've been there, and uh, we're still there. Uh, and there is we, there are no gains that have been made. And I think it's one of those <laughs> very. Impossible. It, 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 there's nothing to win there because there is nothing to win. Yes, Phil. It's all to Mike's, to Mike's statement. If you want to stop them from going to Pakistan, just build a wall. Yeah, Kevin, you raise your oh, hand. Oh, jeez. Build a wall in the mountains, Phil. Build your damn wall. They probably blow it up with dynamite. Well, pull them out of your carpet shop instead. <laughs> if, if Phil, hey, uh, I mean, I've got Kev a solution, Phil, for all the Confederate monuments. We're going to gather all the Confederate monuments up and line them up against the Mexican border. That'll be our wall. Uh -huh. okay. We won't destroy them, and we'll be protected by Confederate generals. There okay, but let me uh, let me uh, let me ask Kevin. He had his hand up, and he wanted to say something, and I, I everybody else started talking, and we never got to him. Yes, Kevin. No, I just I just made a comment that it, Afghanistan, right at this point, is just seems like maintenance more than anything else. Yeah, but it's a very expensive maintenance for us. Yeah, exactly. It, it, That's the uh, point. It, it, you don't get nothing out of it. It's maintenance that costs us. We in I, I do want to ask, if, did anybody hear what happened down in Arizona? I was at a town meeting with the local House of Reps here in town for the first uh, half hour, an hour. What did uh, he say down in Arizona? Still on. Oh, it's still on. Hey, Rob. Did you hear him say... He did say one thing at the beginning. So, he said, we were goodbye? truthful last night. We were truthful last night. First big quote from the speech. <laughs> Which means, first, he didn't write the speech. And number two, <laughs> he, he's not truthful the other times? Of yeah. course he's not. What does that mean? And then he lied. He repeated his comments from Saturday morning after Charlottesville. Yeah. Where, uh, and, but he left off, and he made a lie. Because as I said this, I said this, he left off the last sentence where he talked about on many sides, on right. many sides. And the audience went crazy. This is like a white supremacist rally going on down there. Yeah, yep. Oh. He's inciting a riot. And both oh, yeah. sides have guns. I don't know what's going to happen when it's over. Yeah. The protesters well, that's... outside in 107 degree heat. Oh, yeah, right. and, and the mayor's telling him not to come. He still showed up. I guess for the for the for the final finale, he's probably going to uh, pardon Ar Arapello, the sheriff down there, who is a that's, racist. That's, uh, that's what I was wondering: is if he did that or not? No, he talked about uh, it. No, not yet. But you, you know, the the statement from the White House today said, "Not today. We're not <laughs> going to be pardoning the sheriff today." So did that mean during wanna... daylight hours, or did that mean maybe not till actually tomorrow? No, they want to get his tomorrow. ass out of town first before the gun bolt starts flying. Joe, well, gun bolts, there'll be lightning bolts coming down. He's got Franklin Graham with him. Because they're going to let him let him loose. It's going to be uh, 
It'll be a war down there, probably. Renee, you just joined us. What do you have to say about this? I hope he gets to be ambassador of Afghanistan and somebody blows his brains out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really wants, feel. Yeah, he wants, he wants to appoint an ambassador or something to, to Iraq. Is that what you said? Uh, I think something like That's that. What yeah. One, yeah, so let's, a viceroy, let's make him the vi a viceroy for Iraq. Yeah. And and tell everybody on the fucking planet where he is. <laughs> and the we'll first one that win. How did I'm that work for that uh, congresswoman from uh, uh, was it um, uh, Minneapolis or something uh, that that called for uh, Trump's assassination? <gasps> That's a little much. Who did? Uh, yeah, they, Congress that crazy. That's crazy. He said wow. that. What, Renee? Stop. They called for Obama's office, so don't well, be acting well, like this. In this didn't. last, just last week, there was a congresswoman from, I, uh, it was one of the states around, uh, uh, where, where, Patrick, uh, Maxine, say again, I, I can't hear you. Maxine Waters. Was that who oh, it was? No, no, it wasn't it was else. and it wasn't Ma it wasn't Maxine Waters. Maybe, maybe she did too, but it was another one. For, uh, and uh, the governor is talking about firing her. Uh, he can uh, it's like from Minnesota or uh, Wisconsin or one of those areas near Patrick. Um, it hmm. It was another state. Yeah, well, it was some so, you know it was one of those states around there. Well, anyway. Uh, she called for his assassination, and they're and they're talking about uh, uh, doing something to her. To uh, why you guys wanted to hang you? You took a likeness of Barack Obama I to take a anything. Lot, a lot of your rallies. All right, and all right, all right. That, that, wait a minute, wait a minute. Phil, Phil got fire. it wrong. Phil got it wrong. Oh, who was it? Surprise. Well, to begin with, her name was. <laughs> Uh, so what, a black here. woman. Yeah, black woman, and her name is Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal, and she's from Missouri. Yeah, Missouri, you know, it's in that yeah. area. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and what she did is, uh, I put up a statement saying, I really hate Trump. He's causing trauma and nightmares. It was my original post. Then the post uh, received many responses, and Chappelle Nadal said, and to one she replied, I hope Trump is assassinated. She didn't call she didn't. Call, she didn't say Oops. she was going to assassinate him, <laughs> or somebody should assassinate him. She just said, "I hope uh, he gets assassinated." You uh, did a coffin to Barack, President Barack Obama. Stop acting like this is a big deal. You it is a big deal. It's a sting president. Well, so was so Obama. Obama. Yeah, I didn't do anything to Obama, and it's and nobody else did anything. It. Obama. Yes, uh, Patrick. Patrick's got his hand up. Wait a minute. Hold on, everybody. Patrick's got his hand up. I'd rather see you speak. Oh, will you shut up and let Patrick speak, please? Yes, Patrick. All right. There's a difference between Renee or Phil or me or anybody on this panel talking shit about the president, like wanting to assassinate him, versus a sitting senator, congressperson. Somebody in office, because they're holding an office, they have a higher duty, and they should know better. I agree. A civilian like us, they're the difference. I and agree. they're always... No, actually, difference. we can get in trouble, too. If I came on here and oh, I'm I, not yeah. saying this in any way, shape, or form, that, that the pre sitting president should be shot in the forehead from four miles away in the White House. I can't do that. Uh, if, you said, if you said if you said that if you said that either. and meant it, uh, I would be getting a visit okay. from Homeland Security or from the Secret exactly. Service, right. and I even so, might get a call from uh, uh, a call upon from the Secret Service just for us discussing. You know that somebody yeah. called for his assassination. No, they're, they're out of money, Alex. The Secret Service is out of money. Oh yeah, did you see that? They're out of money. The Only for vacations. Too many people to cover. <laughs> Only for its protection. Um, well, that's okay with me. Yeah. Don't pay them. He needs protection good. because of the way he talks. Well, no. that's why he needs protection. And a hypocrite because he, he ran on the vacationing, golf playing Obama, and he's yeah. been to his properties 
half the time that he's been in office, he's been in his properties. But he's working when he's there. Oh, cool. uh, he's, uh, he's oh also, come uh, off it. Yeah, and I, and I used to lie to the world by saying I prepare for my radio show 24-7 because I'm living life and paying attention to everything. Yeah, what? bullshit. He's not, he, he, he hasn't been president for a single, a single day he's been in office because I don't think he's made a single decision. Yes, Patrick. The White House should be sitting. Not in Florida, not in New Jersey. Not at Camp David. His ass should be in Washington D.C. And that's it. And he doesn't like it there, though, because the air didn't work. Yeah. The air didn't work. He needed new carpet. You know. Uh, well, what we do? He got. He's got to put in all that fucking gold White furniture House. that he loves and make uh, the White House look like Versailles. At Where's least twice a month, he's got to so crap in a gold if, toilet. Yeah. yeah. What did he get himself a trailer to live out in a trailer out in the, out in the White House yeah, grounds? Yes, Renee. I, 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 Ren, Renee? I need to rewire all of the bugging devices. So he had Trump move out while they redid the wiring for the bugging devices, and then they redecorated on top of that. That's my that's my theory. Um, I did. Anybody want to talk about what happened to the Navy Vice Admiral? Who was, yeah, in the South Fleet? Fired. He's looking for yeah. a job. He gets the viceroy job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he needs. He gets the viceroy job in Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. Ultimately, they're responsible for the what happened. I, I don't. Really, I don't know much about boats, but how do you run into to a begin boat with their ships? Three times <laughs> the size of your boat. Uh, the boat they hit. A boat, is, is, a boat is something ship. you buy for recreation. A ship is something yeah. that you put guns uh, on. I don't the care. Ship, the ship that uh, collided with a cargo uh, uh, ship, mm -hmm. the cargo ship was larger than the. Uh, well, of course. The you, ever, do you, you, you know, how big do you think. Is, how, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. How big do you think a destroyer is? 400 feet, maybe? No, they're, they're, they're very small. Oh, the story I uh, love to tell is when I was in the Navy, they asked me, what kind of ship would you like to be on? Would you like to be on a destroyer? Well, I thought a destroyer was a big motherfucking giant mm -hmm. boat, right? A boat. Uh, <laughs> uh, a ship. And uh, uh, they, I said, no, but what else do you have? And they said, well, we have a cruiser you could go on, the USS Topeka. Since and I said, oh, cruiser, that sounds nice. Sounds like it's just a little <laughs> ship that goes and cruises around, right? So now I no, show no. up I show up at the, at the pier, and I have to ask somebody, and I'm looking on both sides, and there's a small ship over here I think is the cruiser, and there's a big one over here I think is the destroyer, and I was sadly mistaken. The big ship was the cruiser. The small ship was the destroyer. <laughs> So. I have been diving since 2002 on one ship in the Keys. Called, uh, it's a landing docking ship, and uh, that is... It always has to, to come back to Phil and his scuba diving. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, it's 525 feet long, and, and, and it's made specifically to carry troops and, uh, and uh, mm. tanks and things like that. Uh, so if, if, a, if a landing docking ship is 525 feet, uh, how big's a destroyer? Landing docking ships are bigger, I believe. So I, that, but so believe me, you would be amazed how small destroyers are. And I saw that the thing that hit them, and it mm -hmm. was huge. It was yeah. just it's huge. 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 How do you not see that coming? Well, it's a very busy shipping channel. But the thing <laughs> is, uh, I, you know, you can't excuse this. It was the 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 uh, the destroyer did not have the right of way. Uh, because it was the smaller vessel, and the uh, the vessel that did have the right of way was the cargo ship. Well, there's one other thing. Radar. <laughs> uh, I, I think I know what happened, Phil uh, and Alex. Yeah. Uh, they said it was not a cyber attack. They no? come out and said they don't think it was a cyber attack. Right. It's, that was a possibility. Like we, we, first of all, they would never tell us if it was. But right. here's my theory. Uh, I think they have younger people on there. They don't have the old sailors that were the real sailors. They have younger people now, and they've got so many computers and automated equipment uh, that they're removed from having real sailors that that use normal sailing techniques. They're realizing too much on the computers. And just the because visuals, the computer's yeah. wrong, these it means they're just not, 
they're not taking it seriously Tim, and they're not seasoned. Tim, these were very that advanced. That makes sense. Both of those. That's uh, Brian, ships, by the way, who has joined us. Oh, yeah. We're very advanced. Oh. Those are the ones that are carrying the uh, the um, uh, the things that they need for, to counter the missiles, possibly from North Korea, and uh, so they're they're supposed to be very advanced ships and have very advanced technology. But, but, but only if you're a good, you're, only if you're a trained user and you've had sailing experience to know what it can and can't tell you. The same thing happened to the mortgage crisis. When they relied on computer modeling to get people loans. Now hold they, on a second. They, Look, if you well, saw something, hold, hold, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on. I've got. To, I've got to be the traffic guy here. Uh, Patrick's had his hand up for a while. Then we'll go to you, Renee. You're right after him. Okay. One, I agree with Tim Cadet. My theory as well, because I think it's inexperienced, and I also believe it's lack of training, even with what they do. I think they they changed their training. And number two, I heard this is the fourth incident in the past yeah. year Correct. with the Navy. Um, no, fourth. The third yeah. in 2017, but ah. in a year span, the fourth time. And I agree that, that that commander of the Pacific Fleet should have been removed because he is he's in charge. I mean, even if it's not his fault directly, it's his, it's his fault. So I agree with that move, but I also agree with what Tim said, because I was talking to my stepdad um, yesterday about it, and he was in the Navy, and I said, what do you think about this happening now twice in the last two or three months? I said, it's got to be lack of training, or there's some kind of, there's something going on with the age difference, because if you have an 18-year-old that are in charge of steering the fucking uh, ship, do they have the experience? I mean... I think, they're not hiring I, sailors, they're hiring tech, techies. I, techies. Think all the, uh, I think all the millennials are standing around looking at their iPhones. Yeah, Boom! I, <laughs> Go the tech thing. Don't text and pilot that's a ship. That's right. If you, now, if you, if you saw somebody three times your size coming at you, but they didn't see it. The they didn't know they to didn't watch yeah. the equipment right. You know, so the equipment they... probably knew it, but they didn't read it or it. It's a video game. Just yeah. push start over. <laughs> you know, uh, you're talking. Somebody was talking about texting and operating uh, heavy equipment, not just cars. And I recall there was an incident uh, a number of years ago where uh, there was a, uh, a train conductor who did just that. He was texting on his cell phone and was conversing. Oh yeah. With uh, I guess it was like his nephew or something, and, uh, right. and, and it caused a big train thing. accident. That, I, I, I got, when the Renee's done, I'll, I got an example. Yeah. No, go for it. I, I want to hear why somebody could miss something three times that size. Go for okay. it. Okay. I have a I have a, a Sonata Hyundai. I have a backup camera, and I also have a when I'm changing lanes, my blind spot warning. I find myself starting to rely. I've had it for a couple of years. Rely on that 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 blind spot signal and not looking through both mirrors like I. You did 100% of the time in the past. True. So true. That's a minor, minor improvement in technology. Can you imagine what changes have happened on this? It makes you lazy. It makes you very lazy as a driver. And then when I get in my other car that doesn't have the side, uh, you know, the, the, I'm like, ah, what a pain in the ass. I have to look. I have to turn my head. That's why a hundred of the top tech companies come out warning about all the killer robots. There's seven or eight countries building killer robots that can be. Malfunction. They can be hacked into. ISIS doesn't need to go and get anything. All they got to do is hack into things, and uh, they can they can make other things malfunction. They can make a car. You, you know, there was one reporter, a journalist, they think was killed by somebody hacking into his car. Oh, absolutely. At least, is... at, least Jor- at least Jordan is his widow. She's on MSNBC off and on. But he was on to some big story about the mil- um, I think military industrial complex, and he, uh, he asked to borrow a friend's car. They wouldn't let him borrow, and his car wrecked, and they don't know why. They think it was hacked into. Uh, let me uh, let me let me throw out something else here, and that's uh, a little uh, bitch bitch fight that's going on now. We got Mitch McConnell not too happy with the president, and says that this presidency has gone beyond any right. kind of 
any kind of saving, as it were. That it's yeah, it's, they're cussing at each other. That, what, what do you say, Brian? Bitch McCockhold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? You know why he was terrible. <laughs> what did he yell loudest about everybody? What did he yell loudest about the McConnell? Not not the health care bill. What was it? I can't remember now. It was I remember not it was protect, not being able not to protect, touch right. McConnell's not wife's not pussy. Counselor. What? Right. Not and protect. all the investigations. Yep. You know what that is? That's obstruction of justice. <laughs> the, the 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 guy that retired from the, the Department of Ethics was on saying that's another string of uh, obstruction of justice he's partaking he's trying off. So you know there's something to find there. He is desperate. Yeah, but all I'm saying is, is that this statement today by by McConnell is a warning shot across the bow by right, him to, to Trump saying we're yeah. at war now, and uh, <clears throat> I don't think you're you've got a you got a shot. You know, he's been very quiet tonight, and he's he's back from vacation, so he's probably just exhausted. That's why is is yeah. Jeff. <laughs> what do you think about all of this, Jeff? I'd like to hear huh. your take on it. I I, I really wish that the president would have a, a heart attack or something. <laughs> yeah. you, well, I, I said this I said this the other day, uh, 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 Jeff, yes, that, that, that there is always that theory that if you got, uh, oh, say, a soccer stadium and filled it with people and you put somebody in the middle of the soccer stadium and wished him dead, that he would drop dead because of just the mental energy focused in ah. his direction... And I'm saying that if we have a day in America where we all just kind of focus in on that, maybe, you know, fat soul will get a heart attack. Who would like to see Mnuchin fourth in line take the presidency because his wife would be the perfect first lady? Mnuchin? <laughs> oh, my Marie God. Antoinette. Is that the woman Is that the woman everybody hates now? Yeah. Yes. I, everybody's uh, been saying, let, let them eat cake. Because she actually played uh, Marie Antoinette on some... CSI in the episode they said, uh, well, but I, well, I, I, I have it. Let, let them I, eat white cake. I, I, I I'm like uh, I guess uh, um, six degrees of separation from Mnuchin because we both my wife and I uh, go to an, op uh, an ophthalmologist, uh, the guy who operates on eyes and does a lot of stuff like that, and his um, that's his brother-in-law. Oh, poor guy! And everybody in the family, and everybody in the family hates him. So, well, <laughs> I got, hey, Alex, I got you. I got you beat, Alex. Yeah. My Go son's ahead. pediatrician was best buds with Bill Gates and went fishing with him and had uh, flies that Bill Gates made on his wall when my son went. But that has ah. no. But we're talking about Mnuchin. We're not talking about Bill Gates. I know, but I we're talking no, about we were talking about Mnuchin and his wife yep. now is like uh, his wife is now uh, tweeting. Oh, tweeting. It's, there's a big riot going on outside a Trump rally. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's throwing bombs or throwing smoke bombs. I got CNN on that's, right that's now. Oh, really? It's full lefties. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let that's me. Let me. Left. Lefties. So, I, I very I seldom ever turn on the TV way. set here while I'm. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Alex, I got a, I got a suggestion, Alex. Yeah. Why, some night when 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 these rallies are on, why don't you do a, a mystery science theater three thousand version, where you, <laughs> we watch the show and we all make robotic comments? Yeah, um, and and then play and then sell that. Mnuchin's wife, uh, uh, all she did was uh, she put up a, an Instagram post. Yeah. Uh, not all she did. Designers. This is making her the cunt of the universe today. I understand. She, she humiliated a, 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 a poor lady. She humiliated, uh, yeah, well, because the poor lady, I guess, uh, did something on her Instagram account, and then she answered her in an inappropriate way. But she apologized for it, and she took down the post, and she took down the account, and made it private. But all she did on that Instagram page was tag the different designers that happened to have been uh, the ones that she was wearing. That is totally inappropriate. Well, you that's know, like, the, that's the, like uh, Gingrich's wife getting free jewelry from Tiffany's. Well, they they, yes. they tag they tag that stuff all the time. Uh, you know, what dress did Melania wear to this thing, and which which uh, which uh, designer designed that dress? Uh, you know, th this is something that's done all well, the time. Well, but she's in a position to get free stuff from these people. Well, she right. didn't get it free, and she's. <laughs> 
she and Mnuchin has have this have paid now for their travel back to reimburse right. the government. No, no yeah. but I'm talking she, about getting free merchandise from these these designers yeah. after they're, he's out of office. They loan them uh, that merchandise. Tim, Tim, well, Tim, or just Tim, like Tim, Tiffany's Tim. did uh, the Gingrich then. Same story. Tim, she, yes. these people have well into the half, uh, some like five hundred thousand billion dollars. I mean, it's. A huge amount of money. She's going in and buying... by people out of their homes. Oh, my God. She can buy entire cities with the amount of money that that man has. And if she's... Is this this going to help him get his tax break or tax cut that he wants? So, the thing is, is that a lot of people... These stupid... These kids do this all the time, and people do this all the time. I'm not saying I'm for it or I'm against it, but if you're talking about Hermes to people who can't afford a five thousand dollar bag, you probably shouldn't be talking to them. Not right. that way. Well, that's why no, she uh, not. private uh, made her account private uh, because yeah, but I didn't you know, and that, that happens. I, I, you know, people say stuff on Facebook and things like that, and you don't realize, or at least if you're new to it, you don't realize that it's going out to the world. No, but you get to know what's in their heart, just like when Trump uh, doesn't read the script and he, he just goes improv well, on it. It was a Marie Antoinette. It was a Marie Antoinette moment. Okay. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And, and the other person that's fucking just wealthier than crap in this administration is uh, Tillerson Tillman. What's the guy's name? Tiller- yeah. Tillerson. Yeah. That guy. Why he took- oh yeah. Oh my God! You could just you there a river of money flows through that man's house. Uh, just a river of money. They have. You got the medal of honor from Putin. You got the medal of honor from Putin. Too bad that river of money rests at my feet. By the, well, by, the, uh, by the way, I'm yeah, looking. I'm hold, hold on, everybody! I finally got my TV set working. Um, and and they're, yeah, they're getting all, ugly out there, isn't it? it, it is isn't that a shame? Where president is responsible for that? I yeah. just I just saw a uh, can you uh, I just you saw show? a big no, I can't a big show. sign that says "fuck Trump" on Fox. <laughs> uh, can, can your camera show it? No, uh, no. I gotta re- no. I'd have to back it up. Yeah, yeah too bad the smoke bombs, not pipe bombs. You can tell that there've been there've been smoke bombs because there's a lot of smoke in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're trying to keep them separated, but yeah. Look, Trump barely made the billionaire club. That makes him barely wealthy. These people we, that we he put in office any, uh, any, make them are already well into the middle of the billions, and they have shitloads of money. And he put them in the White House, and the next. Trump people. What? We won't have to uh, throw any benefits for for Trump to make not sure that he gets his next meal. Uh, you know, I, you know barely not. making the billionaire thing is still pretty damn good. Wow! We are talking, that, that, but he barely made it. Into, but these people that he appointed are well into the billions. I mean, well into. Oh, it. oh the so ga- by the way, by the way, the smoke. Wealthy and rich. Yeah, the smoke, the smoke that is dispersed is actually police using gas to disperse the protesters. Yeah. You know when they yeah. bring yes. out the gas, yeah, this is not a pretty situation. You know. Well, like, like well, I think that, that that police officers in Arizona are trained well enough to go there. Maybe it no. needs. It's something that'll keep some people from getting killed. Uh, like, you know, separating everybody, dispersing the crowd, uh, because I think personal safety is a little bit more important than... Well, Donald uh, the, screams the, uh, personal safety, and then he he, he ignores the the, uh, the advice of, what, the mayor of Phoenix saying, don't come, and he the, goes anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if shit's going to happen. Uh, should dictate... Oh, I think... I, I, don't you, Phil, 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 Phil. Don't you He's, think it is terribly uh, it's irresponsible? It's not a matter of dictating; it's a matter of reality. Hold on a yeah, second. A don't you don't you think, okay. Phil? Phil, yeah. how, can I say something here? Phil, yeah. don't you right. think that it's terribly irresponsible of the president when he is told by the mayor of the city, "It's not good for you to come here. It's not going to, to cause problems 
to no. to to come. Oh, then you're then then you no. you would believe this one. guy this guy, and then you're saying that you don't want to put people in harm's way. Well, this president yeah. just I'll did. I'll tell you why. It's a matter of free speech. But, it's a matter but, of the okay. uh, No, no, no. He, he, wait a minute. He, uh, he asked him. Yeah. And he, and he, will you Trump. listen to me, Phil? He was. Uh, he asked him, and he, he he asked him because he felt it was in the best interest of public safety, and the fact of the matter was he didn't listen. Slippery slope. Then the mayor of Podunk is going to ask him, and the mayor of this one that doesn't agree with him is going to ask oh, him. Oh, slippery slope. This is okay, so let's let's state. let's then go there and let a riot take place. What happened to limited right. government, states' rights, and municipal rights, Phil? Yeah, uh, that has nothing okay. to do. The Patrick has had his hand up so long, I think he's getting gangrene. Patrick, I agree with Phil. Um, I fuck the mayor. I mean, the thing is. The president has a right to hold a rally or a, uh, an announcement, on, and it's up, to the, it's up to the mayor of the city and the police department to make sure that there's safety, regardless. And you know what? If if the babies on both sides can't handle the other side not agreeing with them, that's their fucking problem. That is not the president. Nobody should have to agree with Nazis. And, right. they're, and, they're, and what they believe. That's well, bull- and he's still not. See, and I he's not condemned them. One. He, he even he read can't. his speech from Saturday again. That is inciting a riot because he got in trouble for that the first time. Clarif- and he had to repeat because he's such a smart guy. He clarified because the news is taking it out of context. No, but he left out the <laughs> sentence that was important about the many sides. Many sides. There was violence on many sides. Right. That was BS. But it was the truth. Wait a minute. He's never. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, no, how, no, how can you take? How can you take? How can, wait a minute. On Hold on a second, Phil. How can you take somebody out of context? Okay, mm-hmm. when he said it for the record on the air, and they have a recording of it. And yeah. he clarified. Tonight, no, no, tried. he he clara he tried to weasel out of what he had said, and then he went back a day later and but weaseled out of of the of retraction that he made. The well, he, you know, to call him a Nazi, I think, is a is a travesty. He is and, okay. You know, I, no, I, I'm not saying he. I'm not saying he is a Nazi. He just sympathizes with Nazis. Hey, Phil, I got. Remember the other night when you were talking about pornography? Yeah. Child pornography. I think I was thinking about the First Amendment, and when it comes to Nazis and the Nazi way of doing things, the Nazis were so egregious and so heinous. They should have a special category like child pornography, where there's really no there's zero Okay, tolerance. hey, let me let me let me, let me I, jump let me jump in here. Okay, is this going all over the place, Phil? Let me jump in here, please. All right. Uh, I was just noticing the coverage, and I'm watching Fox, so you can't tell me I'm watching fake news. Okay, and Trump, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, is still inside giving his speech. No, I think it ended. Well, they no, showed. I, think, I, I think they sh- escorted him out, Alex. Did they, they escort him out? Because I saw a shot of him giving the speech, and I thought maybe that was inside. This has taken all the focus off of Trump. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think this is the aftermath here. Y- yeah, this is going to be the main the story thing. on tomorrow's news. Is this riot? I'm not, proud to not, be an American. Yeah, real proud. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. American. Well, as I was trying to say before. Uh, Regardless of which side it is, um, everybody needs to act like adults. And if they can't, then this is what you have. And it's up to the mayor and the police department to make sure that there's safety. It's not up to the president. And, yeah, but they to come. All right, let me let me. Let, you, but what what makes people what, what makes people riot in the first place? Okay. What makes it, 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 no frustration? We. We don't know if they're rioting or if they're protesting. And we don't Number know how, one, and we don't know how much of that rioting is being exacerbated by the gas. That's right. Another, and then, oh God, because I was in the middle of a riot once where gas was dispersed, and it was called the Chicago Convention riots. And I saw the police beating people over the head, and the gas was being used to agitate them and to confuse them. Uh, so you know, gas isn't always the best. Uh, option I was here. a cop in the middle of a riot. Uh, and I, I don't care, Phil. There are other people who have their hands up first, like Tony, who never says anything. Uh, so let him say yeah, something. Yeah, I'm enjoying all the banter. This is basically for Phil, doesn't it? 
alarm you that so many people don't like Trump? No. Okay, then you also, know the okay. also uh, uh, Rob had his hand up. Rob? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? Oh, I thought you did. No. Okay. No. You don't find that alarming? Like he's so <laughs> Half of the country doesn't like Trump. Uh, it's just like the South. The, the South more lost than the half war. the country doesn't like Trump. Phil, look at the statistics. The, the half that voted for Hillary. Well, let's take the thirty-six percent that do like him and the other percentage that doesn't, according to the latest polls. Well, if you believe polls, if, uh, now if you, you well, polls, what, what are you going to? Well, then where are you getting your figures from? Well, I getting my I was asked a question, how come so many people don't like Trump? And there were many people that did not vote for Trump. There are people that uh, voted for him that don't feel that they're getting what it was that they thought they were going to get. You're always going to have some dissatisfied. You don't uh, think there's people that who voted for Trump and now they don't like him? No, this is a this, this is a this is a visceral, visceral distaste for Trump. Because, it, because no, because he has he has brought it on himself with his statements. He probably it took eight months. That's what baffles me. But uh, he, it was a visceral reaction to him before he got elected. Wait a minute. Let, wait, 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 let Brian say something here. Brian, what were you trying to say? I just continue. I don't know why it continues to floor me with surprise, but it, it really does. I mean, it's only been eight fucking months. Yeah. Not eight years. Not four years, not two years, it, it, not six years. It's only been it's been less than a year, and it's, this guy's more unpopular than Nixon. You've also yeah. got a poll out there. Eh, yeah, fake news, whatever the fuck. Who, who needs polls? Unless of course you're dancing on them in the strip joint. Uh, but the uh, poll that it, 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 that that states that uh, forty percent of Americans want forty percent of the entire population of the United States of America uh, want to see. Trump impeached. Kevin? Yeah. I was just at this town meeting with uh, uh, Representative Panetta. He's a Democrat. Yeah. And the one thing yeah. he did say that he he mentioned tonight that the, the atmosphere in Washington is um, one that we don't see. And he said it was, you know, he obviously said he was glad to be away from it. But he also said a lot about how the Democrats and the and the and the Republicans are actually working everything from the bottom up because he you know he believes leadership is not there and that leadership is going to come from the bottom up. Just like he referenced McCain's speech and what McCain said before the uh, the big vote on the on the um, the health care thing. He said that the, you know. We work for the people, and yep. Yep. That, that. there's a lot of people in Congress and in the Senate that are talking underneath Trump, and and they're working to, you know, get some bipartisan things done, but it's got to float up to the top. <coughs> it's and, their uh, job. Yeah, and 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 that's that's the only way things are going to get done with this. The way things are right now, it's the way things it's going to get. Uh, done oh, you know, in, in I want I want to with reps in the Congress and then and then move up the Senate and then move up to him and he can't do much if it's if it's agreed on by both sides, let right? Let me let me let me also mention something here. Phil, majority, Phil, yes. Phil brought up uh uh gee, this is a freedom of speech issue. The president has the right to his freedom of speech. And I'm going to counter by saying no he doesn't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he has the world's largest megaphone anyway. He used it last night. He's using it again tonight. Uh, he has more of an ability to say what he feels than any of us do. And, people, and, and wait a minute. And, his, and that, he, he has a, excessive amounts of free speech available to him anytime he wants to hold a press conference or whatever. Free speech is an individual right for individuals. In this particular case, he should have stayed away from Phoenix if the mayor felt it was going to be a dangerous situation. What about the thousands of people that he doesn't this give a, he doesn't give a shit, Phil. He doesn't Those care about human beings. Place. He doesn't care about the safety of Americans. He doesn't give a good goddamn. He's never no. had to. He's never been part of that America and he doesn't understand what they're going through. Those and the purpose was a campaign style rally. Yes. 
Yeah. First, Rob, first, Rob, first, Rob, no, Tim, be Tim uh, Rob, and then uh, Renee. I agree with you 100 percent. What and I agree with what Patrick said as well about the, his right to. But he he is so narcissistic that he doesn't understand what's best for anybody but Donald Trump. His ego won't let him. He goes there. He gets stroked. It's the only he could talk to America anytime. 9 p.m. Turn on the camera from the White House, from the Oval Office, and he could say whatever he wants. It's been, but he needs that stroke factor he gets from those. Whether it's good for the Phoenix or not, he be damned. He don't give a damn what happens now. Yeah. And also, uh, also I heard a story that he has his mail filtered. So the only mail that gets into his office is stuff that's positive to him and not negative news mail. Too. What? News, too. I do the news. same thing. News, too. <laughs> the news as well. He gets a, he gets hey, a folder every morning with any positive story. Oh, yeah, he, he gets a folder every morning. and With, with, with only positive stories that's in it true. about him. That's it's right. a small it's, folder, but... And he, it, and he <laughs> spends more time on that than I heard than he spends on the security briefing, but I'm sure that was just rumors. Right. Uh, um, to the note, mm -hmm. Phil... If your poor little people want to go visit the president, they should make more money so that they can buy an airline ticket so they can go see him. There's no but reason. Stay at a Trump that hotel. Yeah, you can have that. a wedding at a Trump hotel. You can if your people yeah. can't afford it, we don't really care. Well, you know, they have yes. a right to, to see him. Uh, uh, Kevin, I'm sure, sorry. Buy a, to jump ticket, buy a bus ticket. Kevin, buy a what did you want to say? Ticket. Kevin? Yeah, uh, what was the purpose of that of that trip anyway? The, the, the only thing that I heard was it was a campaign style rally. That's how and it was described. So yes. why why we're not in a in an election? We're, we're not in an election. I should have mentioned that he was going to uh, pardon a, 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 a sheriff. He left from the White House. Well. Okay. Trump doesn't uh, eat food. He gets his energy okay. from the, the he, energy from okay. the audiences. Let's the end. Rally. Let's right. end on uh, shut up. Everybody, stroke. everybody, everybody, cool it. Let's end on a happy note. Ooh. Anybody? Yeah, any, that any, that uh, anybody but here? Any going on? What? Flake. He wants to. He wants to defeat Flake and have uh, uh, oh, this other. I said Dr. we're King off the topic <laughs> now, Phil. I want to get on to something just to close the show. That's happy. Does anybody here see? The eclipse. Uh, no. yeah. huh? Trump did. You didn't even use eyeglasses. Uh, did you? Did you, you hoping he'd have hold on a second. Eyes. Hold on a second. Did you? Uh, did you do it, uh, Tim? I mean, Tim. Yeah. Uh, no, Kevin. Just a little bit too far Kev, out of the Hold area. on a second. It was kind of cloudy. I'm sorry, I said Tim because he can't see that I didn't mean Kevin. him. Uh, uh, Kevin. Uh, did you, yeah, did you see it? We only had 70% here. I drove out of town to go see it. But it I, was I couldn't find here. the glasses, but you know what girlfriend did? She found out you didn't have to use the glasses. You could use your iPhone. That if you yeah. put your iPhone up to the sky, you could take pictures of the eclipse and you it could see it. It didn't work for me. Yeah. It didn't work for me. Yeah. We got the way I heard it, Alex, was if you use your cell phone and you switch the camera around to, your, to take pictures, selfie pics, uh, if you don't... Provided you don't look directly at the sun, yeah, you can you can. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. If you if you just yeah, look it, at this, it didn't sun. work for me when I tried yeah. it. And then uh, what Too I did clown. was I had I, my I, uh, I am I am sorry. Cannon yeah. and I put it on. I put these glasses on the end of the cannon and got yeah. some pretty good yeah, pictures. Good. Well, anyway, I just wanted to know if anybody yeah. anybody saw it. Don't Don't filter. That's turn in, uh, turn into a, a pillar of salt if they uh, look into the sun. No, and so just for everybody to know, NASA TV had it on. Uh, so I sent a tweet. I sent a tweet to the president about the eclipse. I said the same people that predicted the exact time and location of the eclipse also say that global warming is real. <laughs> and all humans are born equal. Well, all and I know is that no good that, Nazis that, out there. That, that These picture, that, okay, that right. let me, can I bring this thing to an end? <laughs> At some point, the best thing I saw was the picture of him, you know, wincing, Looking trying to look up, up at the sky, and yeah, the, was, and somebody who and, and somebody who wrote on a day when he could get nothing wrong, he still managed to fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I got an apple pencil. Yeah, what we're, uh, what, we're, what we're what we're what I was hoping was that he would keep looking and he would be blind today, but apparently. Uh, that's not going to happen. Somebody yeah. said something, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. It looked, like, it looked like a scene from Idiocracy, the movie. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. hey, thanks. Yeah, to, yeah exactly. Uh, welcome back, Jeff. 
Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, Mike. Thank you so much, Phil. You always add to the festivities in such a, 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 a maddening way. Uh, Tim, thank you. Anthony Magno thank you. and Brian Ludwig, thank you. It was, a, it was not only a full house, it was a royal flush. And we thank you all for having joined us. Give everybody a big wave goodbye, would you? Okay. Uh, standing by, by the way, next gotcha. over most of this same station gotcha. is going to be the people from the intersection. That's uh, Amy, uh, Amy and uh, Jack. And uh, then at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, it's Connections. Uh, and that uh, comes to us from uh, down around Miami Way or whatever. Uh, I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Whoops. What happened to the music? Oh, I, I hit the wrong button. Uh, no, no, that's not the one I want. Here's, there we go. Uh, should I try it again? <laughs> if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.